Welcome to Seth Craft. In this video, I'm back out here in this 10 by 12 shed and I'm gonna be installing a mini split. This is the Mr. Cool Do-It-Yourself 12,000 BTU. So if you're interested in this install, then continue watching. The Mr. Cool DIY mini split comes with this template and it has this circle right here so that the power cable and the drip lines can go through this. And I also need to find a place to attach this bracket to. And I know that my top plate is above the window. And so I've measured up here the three and a half inch. And I know my top plate is a double top plate above that. And so all of these holes right here will be able to attach into that. So what I'm gonna do first is just use a level to get this template leveled out here. Okay, right there. And now I'm just going to mark on the walls where I need to have this hole put in. So I'm just gonna use a screwdriver to mark my sheetrock back there. And then I'm also going to mark where these holes are because that will go into my top plate up here. The mounting bracket is shipped back here on the air handler. So I'm gonna remove a single screw and that will allow me to take this off of here. There we go. And this needs to be mounted on the wall. Okay, now that I have my holes placed here for putting this bracket up, this came with some uh, rather short screws. So I'm gonna put some Torx three inch screws in here. I think that will hold a lot better. I'm also going to use a level to make sure this is exactly where I want it. Okay, right there ought to do. I'm gonna use a three and a half inch hole saw to cut out the sheetrock here. There we go, three and a half inch hole. Now that I have this first hole cut, I need to angle down a little bit so that the um, condensation line can have a slope to drain out. So I'm going to move about a half inch lower than center of the previous hole and then drill through now that I can uh, find that hole on the other side. This little plastic sleeve is supposed to go into the hole and you can see it's too close to our trim. So we may have to uh, just cut off a little bit of this plastic to make it fit. But I've got my hole saw here. I use my hole saw just to score that three and a half inch hole. I'm gonna use a carbide tip jigsaw to uh, cut that out. Just because the uh, hardy board will destroy any kind of hole saw you use on it. The angled hole is now finished. The next step is to get the refrigerant line moved up and at an angle here. I'm going to do this very carefully so as not to crimp this line. Okay. There we go. Both of these need to be up here at about a 90 degree. Both refrigerant lines, the drain line, and the power cable all need to be fed through the hole. Certainly we'll be able to reach that outdoor unit, huh? Yep. Good thing it's lightweight, huh? It's really not too bad. <laughs> I'm just weak. All right, so it should be able to snap in from the top and then click down into the bottom part. Okay. That sounded Oop. clicky. The inside unit is now installed. Now that I have the indoor unit installed, it's time to work on the outdoor unit. So it uh, has to have one foot of clearance between the building and the uh, unit here. So I'm gonna just measure out here. We've got a foot and this should also be a foot. 
All right, so I'm going to go ahead and mount this down here to the concrete. And to do that, I'm gonna be using these wedge anchors. So I have to drill a 3 8 inch hole and uh, it's gonna be where these legs are down here. So let's mark these real quick. I've got a hammer drill, got it set to the hammer setting and I'm going to use two different size masonry bits. One's just a bit smaller and then I've got the 3 8 right here. And I'm just going to uh, drill into this concrete. All right, that's far enough on that one. We'll go ahead and step up to the next size here. Yep, that should be good. All right, three more of those to do. For the anchors, I have found that if you thread the nut on there first, keeps uh, those threads nice and safe. And you can press this down here and then you just tap it with a hammer. Once it gets down there to the end, it's not gonna come back out. And then you can remove this to get that uh, rubber foot on there. So that's gonna be right there to help the uh, unit not bounce around. All right, I'm gonna pick the unit up here and get it set down on top of these uh, anchors. There we go, very nice. I'm gonna place a washer on that bolt and then thread the nut down to lock that into position. And I will tighten each of these up. And this should keep this unit here quite nice and secure. Now that I have the outdoor unit locked down into position, it's time to uncoil the refrigerant lines. So I'm going to very carefully uncoil these, making sure that I don't have any bends or kinks that are extreme. And this is a very long coil and I only need about six feet or so. I've lined up my coils here with the coils coming out of the indoor unit. And I'm going to be removing these plastic caps and attaching here and trying to be fairly quick as I do that. Same as with the top line, I'm going to be installing the lower portion the same. Now first I did have to remove this cover so I can access my valves here. I've used a wrench to remove the cap of the refrigerant line on the top here. I've also used the included Mr. Cool wrench. It goes all the way in there and allows you to open this valve all the way counterclockwise. And then you can put this cap back on here and give it a little bit of a twist. Nothing too strong there. Okay, and then remove the bottom one down here the same way. Very carefully loosen that up. And then likewise, use your wrench to open that up. Okay, also replace that cap on there. Now that I have these connected, I need to check for leaks. I've just got some soapy water here. I'm going to uh, lightly 
sprinkle that on there and check for any bubbles. I checked both up here and also down here at the outdoor unit and did not find any leaks. So hopefully there are none. Now it's time to move on to the electrical. So I've got the numbers one, two, and three right here, which will correspond to the wires over here on the indoor unit. So let's see here if we can find uh, white is number two. The red here is number one, so that means that the black one over here is number three. And then we got the ground. So anyhow, um, the ground's gonna go down here. So my uh, load, neutral, and ground from the uh, mains power will go on these three over here. So we're gonna be swapping out this 240 breaker here for a single pole, 20 amp single breaker. And that will have power coming out right over here or up under here, depending on the room we have. And that will come down here on the wall and feed right here. I've removed the cover here on the front of the electrical. So now it's time to get the wire here into the hole on this side. And I've already removed this little metal nut right here. I'm going to get that pressed in here, just like that. And then I'm going to reinsert this little metal nut and that will allow me to tighten this down here. Once that has been inserted, it's time to get these little blue protective pieces away from the wires here. Okay, so it looks like the white wire here is number two. So we will match up this down here to number two. It's kind of cramped spaces, so hopefully you can see what's going on there. Loosen that up and get this stuck down in here. The red wire here is number one. Let's get that over here on this side. And lastly, this black wire is gonna go over here to number three. Get that into position and tighten that down. In order to bring power to my mini split, I'm gonna use a single 20 amp breaker, and this is gonna be for 120 volts. And so I have knocked out a hole over here, and I'm gonna be using some of this flexible conduit and it's going to go over here on this side so let's go ahead and get that installed real quick it does have a uh, o-ring there for making this connection watertight the power has been turned off to this breaker box i've cut my flexible conduit pipe to the length that i need to reach down here to the mini split so let's go ahead and get the uh, 10 2 wire pushed into this conduit I just got this wire pushed through here and now I'm going to give myself plenty of extra and I'm going to cut that off of there. And now I need to strip back this a little bit and then attach the ground up to the ground bar, the white neutral over here to the neutral bar, and then the black wire is gonna go into my single breaker and that will go uh, into 120 there. Down here on the bottom is the neutral bus bar. So I'm going to put my neutral into here. Just like that. And now up here on this side over here is the ground bus bar. So that's where I'm gonna put my ground the green ground, or in this case, it's just a uh, bare copper wire.
And lastly, I'm going to take the black wire into the back of the breaker and then tighten that down. And this needs to be snapped into position. There we go. And then I can simply just replace this cover in here. I now have the other end of my wires through the plate here on the outside. So I need to do the ground over on this far side, the neutral, and the load is going to be the black wire or the hot wire. So let's go ahead and work on the ground first. Now, these connections are a little bit awkward here. The instruction booklet recommended that 10 gauge wire be used. Pretty close, tight fit up in here, I should say. The neutral is the white wire. I just put the cover back on the electrical side here, which means that is done. Now we're going to make all of this look prettier later and also get a little channel for all of the wires and things to go into. But it's time to do a test run on this unit. Uh, so currently the breaker is off in here. So as soon as the power comes back on from inside main breaker, we will then uh, give this a test. I'm going to turn on the breaker. Just heard the unit make a connection inside. Let's step in and see what it looks like. That part's working. The outside unit now is spinning and nice cold air is being blown, which means it is heating up for the inside. Very good. Let's go ahead and step in there and I'll, uh, you won't be able to feel it of course, but I can at least tell you that it is working. So warm air is now coming out right here. This little flap adjusts to kind of uh, spread the air around in the building. Very good. Currently the fan is set to a very low speed, but uh, very happy it's working. The unit is running very smoothly. It does not seem to have any kind of vibration whatsoever, as you can see right here. And it's putting out some very cold air out here on the outside. So I believe for now, this unit is done. The homeowner is going to come back later and tidy up all of this. We will also wrap this with insulation. We will put some spray foam in there and put some caulking to make sure that doesn't come loose. And uh, everything will be taped together. And the drain line can go off to the uh, side as we need it. Yeah, I'm very pleased with this. The installation was quite straightforward and simple and really not that difficult. If you found this video helpful, please hit that thumbs up button and be sure you are subscribed for more content. This is my very first attempt at installing a mini split and the Mr. Cool DIY 12,000 BTU was quite straightforward and pretty easy to install. I'm Seth with the Seth Craft Channel and I will see you in the next video. Oh yeah, and I will have links to this in the description down below. I found it cheapest at Lowe's.com, so you can definitely shop around, but I'll have some links for you to check out below. All right, see you in the next video. Bye.